Hey everybody, welcome to the next video in my series on using Sonar X2. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the driver settings contained in the driver settings tab. So go ahead and press the P key to bring up the preferences menu and select driver settings. The first two options we have are playback timing master and recording timing master. I touched on this a bit in the last video, but let's discuss it a little more. When you use ASIO mode, these will be automatically set, and there isn't anything to worry about, as you only have one device in use at any given time. However, if you're using WDM, you can have multiple devices playing back simultaneously. This can cause timing errors when both devices are playing back or recording audio. To work around this, we use a timing master, which can be any of the devices in use. Each other device will then become a slave, and their timing will be controlled by the master device. You can set either of these to whatever you'd like. However, there can be issues if you use a separate master device for playback and recording. The problem is, each device may have very minor timing differences, which will result in sync issues when recording audio with one device as a master, and later playing it back with a separate device as the master. Here we can set the audio driver bit depth. Mine is set to 24 bit. I'll make a separate video eventually about bit depth and sample rate, but for now you just need to know that 16 bits is CD quality. If you're able to go up to 24 bits, which nowadays your audio interface should support that, do it. It will cause your recorded waves to be larger in size, however it is definitely worth it. Here we have a checkbox that says 64 bit double precision engine. What this does is force Sonar to use the 64-bit double precision engine on every part of the signal path. Certain effects and dithering may default to 32-bit, and checking this will force them to run with the 64-bit engine. If a plugin can only run at 32 bits, then Sonar will automatically send 32-bit data, whether or not this is checked. Next up we have Stereo Panning Law. I'll talk about this further later, but for now just know that a panning law is the mathematical formula that a sequencer or mixer uses to control the panning. For example, the default panning law states that when a signal is panned dead center, it will not be affected. However, when you pan hard right or hard left, the signal will be boosted by 3 decibels. We'll look at all of the stereo panning laws a bit closer later. Here we have dim solo gain with three options, negative 6 decibels, negative 12 decibels, and negative 18 decibels. If you notice up here, we have this button that says dim. That dim button activates dim solo mode. Normally, when dim solo mode is not activated and you solo a track, all other tracks will be completely muted. However, with dim solo mode, all the other tracks will be dimmed by either negative 6, negative 12, or negative 18 decibels, allowing you to still hear them, but causing the soloed track to stand out. This is useful if you still need to hear what's going on in the rest of the song, but would like to focus on one or more tracks. Again, we'll look at some examples later. So what you select here will determine how many decibels sonar dims those muted tracks. The next section is default settings for new projects. Here we can set the sampling rate, which I'll discuss further in the video about bit depth and sample rate. If you set this to lower than 44,100, then you'll start to notice a dip in sound quality. However, going above 44,100 is sometimes hard to tell any difference at all. Now I'm sure some of you are going to disagree because if you can hear it, it will be obvious to you, but most people will have trouble discerning a difference between 44K and 96K. I wouldn't go for lower than 44K unless you're specifically going for a lower quality sound. Go ahead and experiment with higher sample rates and see if you can hear the difference. 44K is the rate you will find on an audio CD, so if you record at a higher sample rate, you'll need to mix down to 44K. One other thing to note is that you can enter any value you like as long as it's supported by your hardware. You are not limited to the choices in the dropdown. Also, this is just the default value and can be changed, but once audio has been added to your project, you'll no longer be able to change the sample rate for that project. So be sure to set the sample rate that you'd like to use before you add any audio to the project. Next up, we have the Mixing Latency section. 
This section is only available when using MME or WDM driver mode, so I've switched over to WDM mode for this example. The first value is buffers in playback queue, which determines the characteristics for transfers to and from the audio drivers. Lower this value to improve latency, and raise it if you are getting stuttering audio or are experiencing dropouts. The same applies to buffer size. Buffer size allows you to set your mixing latency manually. Again, a lower value means lower latency, but a higher value will eliminate stutters and dropouts. WDM mode offers lower latency than the older MME drivers. Here we have the Wave Profiler, which is also only available when in WDM or MME driver modes. The Wave Profiler will attempt to determine what sound cards you are using, and if it recognizes it, it will ask if you'd like to use the default settings for your card. Otherwise, it will run a series of tests to see the capabilities of your card. If I click on Wave Profiler, Sonar does not recognize my US200, and I get this prompt. We will now perform a series of profiling tests on your audio hardware to obtain all supported operating modes and buffer sizes. Would you like to continue? I'll click Yes, and Sonar will analyze and profile my sound card. The Wave Profiler runs automatically the first time you start Sonar. You don't need to run it again unless you install a new sound card or an updated driver for your current sound card. Now we have one more option specific to the ASIO driver mode, so I'll switch back to it. Now if I go back to the driver settings tab, you see this button, ASIO panel. Clicking this will open up the control panel for my US200, where I can set the buffer size for the ASIO driver and change the driver configuration. So there you have it. You should now understand all of the options available to you in the driver settings tab. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.